Hello, so there is a new uh, vulnerability out, CV2024-6387. Uh, and it is in open SSH uh, in specific versions of it. And in fact, I can pull them up for you now. The versions are 8.5 to 9.8. Um, and older versions from 4.4 below. So this is a vulnerability that used to exist. It was then patched out and then uh, has been reintroduced. Something's changed in the code. Um, someone has uh, potentially accidentally removed the security check that was in place. Someone has suggested that maybe that was malicious. It wasn't um, accidental that there was a supply chain um, attack happened there. Potentially, we don't know. That was just speculation that someone had. And what this vulnerability is, is a race condition. And what that means is basically whenever you're trying to, or whenever code is trying to complete its action, whatever it's meant to do normally in its course of its day, um, a race condition means you're trying to sort of get ahead of it. And before it finishes doing things the way that it's expecting to, um, you inject something that's unexpected, it doesn't know how to handle it, and it can end up giving you extra privileges or letting you do something that you shouldn't have been able to do because the code was never meant to do anything or handle anything happening at that time. Um, and this is very similar. So um, I'll put a link to the um, some articles and stuff into the description. Feel free to have a read. At a very high level, what this does is it creates, a, it starts an SSH handshake. And then during the course of that handshake, it then starts hitting it um, with requests in the attempt to um, get it to do, run shell code or do something uh, malicious again very high level there's lots of um, additional information in the um, in the blog posts where the vulnerability sort of scope is i guess um it was originally slated that it was only uh, red hat linux 9 um and apparently red hat has tested uh, six seven and eight and they are not vulnerable. However, um, the actual vulnerability does lie with OpenSSL or OpenSSH itself. And so it is possible that this is affecting other things. So there's lots of researchers um, doing stuff at the minute, trying to see if there's other systems that are vulnerable that are also opening this. Um, but at least one of the exploits that was sort of proven out um, was on, on uh, Red Hat 9. Um, so that's what I'm using to test today. I've spun up a um, Red Hat 9 server in AWS, and that's um, sort of what I'm going to be running this POC code against. Um, this is the POC code for it. It is interesting, um, to say the least. I was working with this all day. I hadn't managed to get it working. I have an idea, um, which I haven't tried yet, so we can uh, we can we can do that together and see if we can get it working. Um, at the end, that's the last thing I'm going to be doing here. And yeah, we'll see if we can get it working. We may not. Um, if we do, then I'm going to keep, um, or sorry, if we don't, I'm going to keep um, rattling away at it and trying other operating systems because I, I am one of the people who believes that this is potentially affecting multiple other things. If anyone ever remembers Log4j, Log4j started originally um, whenever it broke. It was, oh, look, here's a cool way that you can hack a Minecraft server. And it ended up setting the internet on fire. Um, so I don't think this is going to be as severe, but it is a powerful tool because whenever this runs, um, this exploit is uh, zero authentication. Okay, so an unauthenticated user, they don't need to have any access to the system. They just need to be able to see the victim machine on the network on port, 2020, on port 22. And they run this exploit and it can then uh, run arbitrary code and it runs it at root privileges so it's a zero to root vulnerability so it is quite severe um if if it works now race conditions are quite difficult to land some people have said that this they've had this running and they've gotten a shell in four to eight hours there's other claims out there that have said that it's taken weeks for it just constantly running in the background so we'll see. I Like I said, I haven't had much success with this code yet. I think I found the problem, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, the actual GitHub repo is uh, on there. The author of this one is the uh, 7 etcsou. SUU. Uh, there are lots of 
POCs popped up on GitHub for this. They all they seem to be the exact same code. I have no idea who the original author is. So if this isn't the original author, or if this is, someone can let me know um, down in the comments uh, just who the original one is, uh, is. I think this is the one that was slated in one of the um, Qualys articles, uh, which was one of the sort of original posts about this. So I think this is the original, but I'm not sure. A um, little bit of a description that you know, it's a, it targets a single handler race condition in OpenSSH uh, based on the glib Linux systems, and it exploits a vulnerability where the SIG uh, AL, ALRM handler calls an async SIG unsafe functions, uh, leading to an RCE as root. Um, there is some things that we need to change in here if we were using this. That is the shell code. I'll talk about that in a second. The glib bases, so if you're targeting a different system, you'll need to tweak these. I haven't tweaked them. Um, I've kept them the same. In fact, all these parameters I've kept exactly the same, which is maybe where I'm running into issues. Timing parameters, fine-tuning based on the target system's responsiveness. Fine-tuning in what way that's... Um, so if anyone's ever looked at POC code before, you'll know that um, documentation usually isn't great um, on a lot of them. And so trying to work out and get it actually running can be can be difficult. So um, I'm keeping an eye out in case someone has explained these things better. But so far, I tweaked in what way? Not sure. Heap layout, again, uh, requires uh, tweaking for different OpenSSH versions. Again, tweaking in what way? I'm not sure. Now, it's not a bad thing that this is requires a little bit of uh, knowledge, a little bit of fiddling to get going, because it means that this isn't e as easily exploitable from like a script kitty. You know, not anyone could just grab this and start running it. You know, you do need to have a bit of knowledge to get it running, which is why I've struggled to get it running because I have, I have zero knowledge. Um, and then uh, file structure offsets verify for the specific glib version. Okay, so these are some variables that uh, need to be tweaked. I haven't changed any of them because I am, as as far as I'm aware, running the same lab setup as what was originally exploited, which is a Red Hat 9 box uh, running a vulnerable version of OpenSSH. So I believe my lab environment is a simulation of, of what was originally used for the POC, uh, but I could be wrong. Um, but So I've kept all of this the same. Um, as far as the... Uh, code goes itself. I'm not going to go through all of this. There is a, a lot of it here. You can have a flick through, but some of the key ones I want to call out are here. So advisory mentions around 10,000 tries on average. So as I'd said, this takes a long time to exploit potentially because you're trying to basically race a very, very fast computer into completing something before it does and getting in ahead of it effectively. So uh, from a defender's point of view, if you are looking to build um, a detection for this, so you're looking for just thousands of uh, requests on port, 2020, uh, port 22, um, something to be aware of. They're not necessarily SSH authentication requests, all of them. It does do that um, quite a lot, so you should see multiple of them. But the actual like uh, you know 20,000, from my understanding, is going to be um, just requests on 22 and it's basically that payload trying to get in so it may not it should look strange um, or at the very least it will look like a ton of um, SSH connections coming in so that's something you can keep an eye out for especially if it's coming from a single IP address um, so from a defender perspective that would be something to watch out for uh, as far as then the shell code where are we sets up the connection did I go past it? I may have already went past it. Let's just do a control F. Ah, here. So obviously this is doing nothing. This is just a placeholder, but the shell code is going to be your, your payload. Basically what you want to detonate on the system as root. This can be a reverse shell. So allowing you to basically log in as a root or have access as a root user or it could be deploying a malware or some other program or something on the system. So you can generate shell code with you know, MS Venom or other tools um, and then put that in here to execute the code. As I said, this is just doing nothing, just as a POC, that's what we've been keeping it at. Um, and you can see here, you've got the glibc bases um, that we mentioned earlier on. That's one of the variables that you need to change. Um, again, I've kept that at the basic, um, at the base level. So, 
what I've got set up is um, a Red Hat 7, a Red Hat 9 box, sorry, in AWS. And what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to run this against it. And I'm going to show you the messages that I um, uh, potentially was getting. Um, so I was seeing some error messages in the past. Um, so we'll see if we're still getting those. Um, like I say, I think I fixed it. Um, arguably, it's I've thrown hardware to software problem. Uh, because the issue I was getting, I believe, was in... If we go to line... 100 and something. Setup connection, send packet, there we go. Um, so it was here. This was erroring. It was getting the send packet um, and then uh, connection not ready. Again, due to the lack of documentation, I don't know if that's correct. If it's just, you know, it didn't go through, so it's carrying on. I don't know. I have no idea. Um, it's, it's hard to tell. I think it might be an actual error, because otherwise, why would they have it in here as an error? You know? Um, so it could be I need to change some of the parameters, I'm not sure. But the issue that I was actually running into was not necessarily that I was getting this back. It was that the program was crashing. So it would run that a few times. It would say sent packet, um, you know, error, sent packet error, blah, 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 and then would stop. And it's meant to loop through, as you've seen earlier on, you know, like 10,000, 20,000 times easily. But it was getting there and it was stopping dead. Um, eventually going through the debugger, it actually looked like it was running out of memory. Um, and I think that was the problem, is that this wasn't releasing the uh, memory that it was allocating. And so it was just chewing it up, locking up, and then, uh, and then you know, dying. Now, the what I was running on was a Kali box in the cloud, which did not have a lot of RAM. And then I was running it on my Mac, uh, my attack Mac laptop, that, um, again, has some ram but it's still only the eight gig uh unified memory that that apple uses um so it was able to do better and that's when i'd first noticed that hey actually this is doing more requests before it's dying so uh, in this case i'm now on my my big beefy uh windows computer that has lots of ram lots of cpu it has a lot of resource so what i'm thinking is that it then might run now it might just continue running and then lock up at another point um, but I believe it does release the memory back after it gets through one of the loops. So I think I just need to make sure that it, it, if I have enough resources to get it through one loop, it then releases it and then we'll try again. I think if I'm reading the code correctly. Um, so I'm going to try and compile this now and we will see we'll see what happens. Um, something to be aware of as well, I'm on a Windows machine um, which this code doesn't compile for. It's not uh, it's got some libraries and dependencies that are, are Linux based. Um, so just if you're wanting to do that, you'll either need to change those libraries or do what I'm doing, which is um, using WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. And if you use that then it, um, to compile it, it then uh, runs fine. So we'll do POC code and let pass. Okay, we've got to compile. And then if I do POC code, and then the syntax for this is IP address port number. Now, I'm going to put a public IP address here. This IP address will be blown away by the time you see this video. So please do not see this IP address and think, ha ha ha, I'm going to hack Grant. It's going to be really funny. I'm going to get onto this IP address and do whatever. I am blowing this way as soon as I finish recording. So if you start poking around that IP address, it ain't mine, okay? This is an AWS, AWS server that I've spun up. It's then going away as soon as I'm finished testing. So that is not me anymore, <laughs> okay? So let's run this. Okay, that is better than what I was getting before. So yeah, the resource temporarily unavailable. That was the error that I was getting before, but as I said, it would stop and then just crash at least now it seems to be getting through a loop but again i don't know if this is an actual error or you know it, it this is this is how the code runs i don't know i haven't seen any screenshots or any docs on how it's running or how it's meant to run but it does look like it is looping correctly because you can see yeah sent final packet then it's receiving the ssh version uh which is on 8.7 8.7 is that hold on let me just double check that that is in fact a vulnerable version 
that seems too high. Maybe that might be my problem. Oh, no, no, yeah, 8.7. 8.7 should be vulnerable still. Okay. Sorry, sanity check there. So it does, it does seem to be running, but again, I don't know if this is part of how it's meant to run. And again, because this is a race condition that it's, this could literally run for days. Um, and, and we, we may never know. Interesting. So what I might do is I am going to spin up a, a VM just locally on my machine running Red Hat 9, the vulnerable version, and I'm going to leave this running against it. So I'm going to blow away the AWS instance because I know what user like. Um, so it's going to get blown away and I'm just going to have a local one. I just, I don't like having a, a AWS box open on port 22, just open to the internet for um, all this stuff. It's tied to my IP address, um, my home IP address, but eh. Um, so I'm going to blow it away. I'm going to run one locally and then that way it should also be quicker because then it's it's the network's all happening on the same box. So it's not actually having to go out to the internet, which I think might give the race condition the best chance. Um, but if anyone has used this before and knows anything about that um i will uh, point out i can ssh to the box so i can just ssh directly to it that works no problem i can connect to it fine so that's not what this is complaining about um so if anyone knows uh what this if this is expected if anyone's used this uh, poc correctly before um or has any other sources please send them my way I'm going to keep poking at this one because I think it's a really interesting vulnerability. Um, and if I have any success with it, I'll do another video. Um, I'll be posting some on TikTok. I'll be doing some YouTube shorts if there's something that maybe wouldn't quite fit under a, a full-blown video like this. Um, and yeah, if there's any updates, I'll uh, I'll put it out there. And if you have any interesting information about this one and you, you think I, I missed, uh, please let me know in the comments below. Um, like I said, I think these vulnerabilities are really, really cool. Uh, let me know if you think so too. And I will keep doing videos about them. Cheers.